New Haven, Connecticut, August the 7th, 1961. A man whose name will never be known was making his way to a basement laboratory at Yale University's old campus. He was about to become the first participant in what were arguably the most famous experiments ever conducted in psychology. Milgram's research began as an attempt to throw new light on the horror of the Holocaust. When the full horror of the concentration camps was revealed to an appalled world, the prevailing view was that this was something culturally specific to Germany, a nation predisposed to obedience, hijacked by tyrannical, psychopathic leaders. But then in 1961, Adolf Eichmann, one of the architects of the Holocaust, was captured in Argentina and smuggled out by the Israeli Secret Service. Eichmann was the man who organised the Holocaust. He arranged the deportations of Jewish people. He arranged for the trains to deliver people to the death camps. Participants for Milgram's research were recruited from the local New Haven area by public ads asking for volunteers from a range of occupations for an experiment on memory. The more errors the learner makes, the more these punishments increase. One of the ways we develop a sense of who we are and how we should behave is through our membership of groups. And these are called social identities. And recently, psychologists have been looking at how social identities may help explain obedience. We don't obey others blindly. We obey others when they think that we, they represent a group or a cause that we believe in. So obedience can come from identification. But how can this idea of identity be applied to Milgram's findings? And we argue, therefore, it's not that people are unaware that they're doing wrong. It's not that they're unaware that they're hurting someone. In the end, they think the good of the scientific cause outweighs the harm that is being done. 